Welcome to Red VTV's instant fan reaction supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2019 season, following Saints' 36 points to 20 victory over the Leeds Rhinos here at Headingley this evening. I'd go for the sponsor, but I can't remember at this Emerald time. Emerald Headingley Stadium. Emerald Headingley Stadium. Yes. Uh, Kev is sunning himself on honeymoon in the Dominican Republic, so I am joined by Chris Price from Wish FM. Um, now, first of all, Chris, are you fit for Wembley next week? Oh, I'm fit for Wembley. Of course I'm fit for Wembley. Well, I might not look I'm like I'm fit for Wembley, but yeah, I'm definitely fit and I'll definitely be there. Um, injury news out of the way. And the main thing for us is Saints have come through pretty much unscathed this evening. Um, a little bit of a worry about Matty Lees who went off, but apparently he's going to be right for next week. And, and fingers crossed, we're going to go into that final essentially full strength. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got the players that didn't play tonight that will come back, the likes of Walmsley and uh, Lachlan Coot is going to be fine. He could have played tonight, apparently, Lachlan Coot. Uh, but they decided to rest him with uh, Wellsby being in decent nick. So he's got another week to uh, to rest up. Uh, Tommy Mack will be back. Um, yeah, and everybody else that's also on the fringes, like Morgan Knowles, who's been ill, uh, will be in the side. Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook. So, yeah, everybody's going to be back next week. Uh, Matty Lees, like I say, he took a bit of a knock, but apparently, like I say, he's fine. And to be honest with you, I, I, I wouldn't go even th fathom beyond the lens that some of these players would actually go to get themselves out on that field next week uh, at Wembley it, it, it'd just be illegal to speak about it on this format I think those youngsters who've come in this evening know the likes of Jack Wellsby Matt Costello Josh Eaves they've all done a really good stint and are going to find themselves really unlucky to be missing out next week for me yeah dead right I mean um, especially you know uh, uh, Wellsby I think he's he's Obviously missed a couple of high kicks early on today, but he's slotted into that fullback spot like you know he's been playing there for years, and uh, he showed quality more so last week than maybe this week. But he's, he's still showed one or two touches this week to suggest that what an unbelievable player he's, he's going to be. And you know eventually Lachlan Coote will he, will leave the club, um, whether that's after you know his, his three year contract ends or whether that's before we don't know. But when you've got a player like that waiting in the wings, I mean. You know, you, you don't tend to worry about stuff like that, do you? And, and when he comes in, he's, he's going to be a, a, a proper worldie of a player for Saints. Yeah, and, and for me, Jack Wellsby, he'll, he won't play next week. He'll miss out. But that's for me, that's just a case of experience this moment in time. And he's going to have many more Challenge Cup finals and Grand Finals to come if he, if he carries on progressing as he is at this club. Well, like I say, I mean, potentially you've got another kid who, I mean, fair enough, the NRL's a big draw and I'm sure that a lot of people look at that now as, as a genuine option for them. But, you know, there's that many Saints players that have turned the NRL down, like Tommy Mack and, um, you know, uh, Johnny Lomax. You know, they could have gone to the NRL at some point and, and chose not to. So, um, you never know, Jack Wellsby might be one of those players. And if that's the case, then... You've got a player for a decade who's who's going to make such a difference to this side, and, and and he's going to keep Saints at the at the top of the game. So, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if he actually made the bench next week. Jack Wellsby's in that good a form, but at the same time, like you say, you probably were looking to go with experience, especially with uh, with playing a, a big pack like Warrington next week. Now, Justin Holbrook this evening has gone with his essentially his first choice halfback partnership of of Johnny Lomax and Theo Farge. They haven't played together since the win over Wigan at the Totally Wicked Stadium that started July and it looked like they haven't missed a beat to be honest I mean you look at the way that they play I mean both of them almost play like they're in dinner suits don't they but at the same time they've got what it takes to be able to mix it up and tough it out with uh, the hardest of players on the field I mean you know they're both known for taking the ball to the line I mean Johnny I mean the lad's world class isn't he absolute utter world class and Easily by a country mile the best standoff in this competition. Um, you could probably argue he might be the best English standoff uh, in the world. Uh, obviously Gareth Widdops, you know, been a bit in and out as of as of this season. He's probably widely recommended as that at the moment. But Wayne Bennett's a fan. Uh, he thinks the world of Johnny Lomax. So do we. And um, when you've got him in your side. I don't care if Warrington have got Blake Austin over on, on their neck of the woods. I'd rather have Johnny Lomax any day of the week. Yeah, and you'll just see Johnny Lomax having Blake in his back pocket if he plays next week. Does Danny Richardson find himself unlucky to miss out next week? In recent weeks, he's shown what he can do, but it's just a case of maybe three into two just doesn't go. He finds himself unlucky not to be playing today to give him another shot at maybe getting in next week. I personally, even though he's got a kicking game to add to this this side, I personally wouldn't have, have maybe picked him in the 17 next week. He is a bit unlucky. I think you're probably summing up the lad's career in, in many respects early on because 
he was probably a bit unlucky, you know, to kind of be be, be ousted at the at the start of the season with with Tio Farge playing as well as he was, and uh, you know, with with various other players stepping up as well. Um, but he will come, you know. He's got plenty of time on his side. He's another young player that potentially, um, if he can improve his game, he's got a long future at this rugby club. And I, I bet Warrington uh, wish they had a Danny Richardson to call upon next week to play, to go into their lineup. Mm. Kevin Nagama. Um, people talk about Conrad Harrell and the, and the effect that he can have on a team. Kevin Nagama has shown exactly why Saints went across to Australia to the NRL and invested in him because he was absolutely unbelievable tonight. He went from probably 0 to 60 in the space of, what, two and a half seconds, finds, yeah. goes through a gap, sidesteps two men and, and gets a hat-trick and, quite frankly, a freak of a performance from him this evening. Yeah, he's an unbelievable player. I mean, like you said, Dave Woods um, takes the credit for that. He went out there and scouted him and said he fit in here brilliantly. And like you say, you look at the physical specimen of the lad and, he, he's, he has got such a physical presence about him, especially in an attacking position. We, we all worry about him a little bit defensively because he maybe tries to kind of overread plays every now and again. Um, but, you know, that's only a certain section of his game. Um, and, and like you say, he's just come in and he scored a hat-trick tonight and he's, he's made Leeds defenders look beyond ordinary. And um, as a result, he'll take all the plaudits from that. And a great, great signing for the club. It's what we were looking for, wasn't it? When Ryan Morgan uh, was in the side, you were, you, everybody liked Ryan. He was a good player. But you were always looking for that, maybe that little bit of X factor. And that's what Kevin brings you as a Fiji captain, as a, one of the island boys, as I like to call them. They've got that little bit of something about them, that little bit of X factor. And it's great to have Kevin here. Um, now, this evening, Zeb Tyre. For me, it just shows the desire in the team. That, that, that try he scored is his second one, or was his first one, when he when he kicks that ball through. Regan Grace collects to race 20 metres up the field to get his hands on the ball to score that try. Just shows the desire that this squad has got. Even with players missing, we don't miss a beat. Everybody's playing for each other. And it, it's like an embarrassment to riches, isn't it? I mean, you look at the back row for Saints uh, tonight, uh, Zeb Taya, Dom Pera. I mean, that, that, back, that second row has been the, the bedrock of, of Saints, you know, back row for a few years now. But it's not so long ago that we were, we were bemoaning that Zeb had come up with an error every game and saying that it was his normal, you know, he'd have at least one error in his, in his, in his game every match. That's gone. Uh, you don't even notice him making any errors now. I think we comment because it's a one-off occasion these days, isn't it? And same with Don Peru. You know, Don Peru didn't have a career here, what, two and a half years ago. And all of a sudden, Justin Holbrook comes in, as a word, weaves his magic. And, and like you say, you can't imagine a Saints side without him. And, you know, those two players are, 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 are another example of, of just how much Justin has turned this side around. Um, from the days when, when, when Kieran was here and, and the way that Kieran used to coach players, motivate players to, to what Justin's done with them. Those two players are shining examples of, of how good a job he's done at this club. Now, Saints have only lost three games this season, um, all of them with Johnny Lomax absent. So obviously, the, the two games at London where we sent, we'd rested players, um, the trip down to Catalan. This side have got opportunity to do something special, haven't they? I know in 2006 we only lost four games, but for this side to, to reach that next level, they have to go to Wembley next week and win a trophy, don't they? Yeah, they do, and uh, they've actually got to go beyond Birmingham and win. <laughs> That's probably yeah. the, what they haven't actually done this year. And like you said, they've gone to Catalan, south of France. They've gone down to London twice and come up croppers. So, yeah, they've got to go. Um, they've got to go the opposite side of the M6 and actually um, come up and turn up this time. And um, fair enough, there's been reasons why they, they were beaten at London. Obviously, they've, they've played weakened sides there a couple of times. And I think at Catalan we played on a, on a cow patch as well. It was an awful and pitch the weather to play as well. I mean, that, that'll be a big thing next week. What, what's the weather going to be like? If it's bright sunshine, it's open spaces, dry ground, I think Saints batter Warrington out of sight. If it's wet, if it's murky, if it's slippery underfoot, it makes it a little bit more of, a, of, a, of an arm wrestle then, doesn't it? And it's who has the most composure and who can make the least errors in the wet weather. Hopefully... Uh, the weather gods will give Saints a dry pitch next week. Yeah, my only concern is if, if Warrington managed to grub us out of it. But if this Saints side play as they do, they, they should go on and, and win that trophy. At the end of the day, Saints can only beat themselves, it seems, at this moment I, I, in time. I think that's, you just said it right, they can only beat themselves. Um, Saints this year, with, with having seen every team this year, the best side I have seen outside of Saints, believe it or not, is Salford. 
they're the best side next to Saints for me. The way that they, they've I've, we've seen matches between every every team in Super League. We've seen Wigan play, Warrington play, Leeds, Huddersfield. We've seen every every team more than once this year. And the best one uh, that we've seen out of the lot of them has been Salford when they came to the uh, the Totally Wicked, I think it was. So Saints, by a long way, are better than anybody else in this league. If they play to their potential and if they play to the maximum, they'll beat anybody. Right then, on to Wembley we go next week. Suits at the ready. Um, join us on Red V TV for our preview show on Thursday afternoon next week. Live from the spa. No, that's Friday. Oh, is that Friday? Okay, well, fair enough. That's a, that's, that a, that, that's a special. That's a special. Uh, but, special. but yeah, we, we hopefully should be able to do something special for a Red V TV pre Wembley show next week. We may even try and get Kev to join us. Yeah, fingers crossed. And not only that, we're going to have hopefully uh, one or two bits on uh, Wish FM throughout the day. So if you're making your way down to uh, to Wembley. Uh, on the actual day of the game itself, keep your uh, your phones on. Yeah, social media. More, yeah, more so on the social media. We're going to try and do a load of stuff uh, on Twitter, whether that's short little videos or just to get the atmosphere, you know, of everybody coming into the ground before does, they actually get. Does there. that mean I need to be early? Uh, well, I don't know, but uh, you're never early. I don't think, but I'm certainly going to try and be uh, a little bit early. But yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah. Tune into the uh, to all the uh, the normal media channels, RedV.net on Twitter, Wish FM on Twitter, and there'll be loads of stuff uh, going out the morning of the game to get you ready for the cup final that kicks off at three okay uh, thank you to chris for letting us use all his expensive kit i didn't realize how heavy a microphone is older than my arms dead say, yeah. um don't forget to like share and subscribe and we will catch you during the week on red v tv Wembley. catch you soon Wembley. yes it's on it's on come on the saints